Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This should be the end of the Temple series. Get your King James Bible and turn it to the book of Revelation. Revelation actually means to reveal. People say, oh, well, I don't understand Revelation. Well, go to Genesis, read the entire Bible, and then by the time you get to Revelation, which is the last book, you'll uh, notice a lot of the symbolism in Revelation comes from the Old Testament. So, with that in mind, let's go to Revelation chapter 3. And um, now let's take a look. Revelation chapter 3. All right, I guess we're going to read the whole chapter because there's, there's a lot of good stuff here in Revelation chapter 3. Verse 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, Do you know that there are at least an angel for the church, wherever the church might be. You got a church here in Sardis, and you got an angel. The angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. So I guess physically they're alive, but spiritually they're not. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Mm. Remember therefore, how thou hast received, and heard, and hold fast, and repent. So, Jesus, these are words of Christ in red. Jesus is telling this church at Sardis to repent. There's a heresy going around now that says that repent just means to change your mind from unbelief to belief. Well, if you read James chapter 2, even, you know, even the devils believe in the Lord. Even the devils believe and tremble. Why is Jesus telling the believing church to repent? Repent of what? Well, he just said, I didn't find your works perfect before God. Okay? Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, wow, he that overcometh. Do you know that we got to be overcomers? Yeah, we have to be overcomers, if you want to believe Jesus. And I do. I may not always do what he says, but I believe him. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not, N-O-T, and I will not blot out, blot, B-L-O-T, not blot out his name out of the book of life. You know, all these people that teach once saved, always saved, eternal security, I don't know. Uh, you know, when I read this, 
it looks like God can blot, you know, Jesus can blot your name out of the book of life. I mean, that throws eternal security and once saved, always saved out the window, if you ask me. But, hey, what do I know? I'm just some guy that read a Bible a couple of times, you know. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not, not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. All right, you got an angel for Sardis, you got an angel for Philadelphia. Uh, phileo in the Greek is translated as love. So have you ever heard of the city of Philadelphia? It was called the city of brotherly love. Now it's uh, one of the crime capitals of the United States. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. Is the key of David the, the key that opens up the door of salvation? Wouldn't surprise me. He that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. Remember Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Oh, yeah. Well, in John chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Back to Revelation 3. Verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. All right, here's one of the most uh, hated verses in the, all the Bible. This, Revelation through, uh, 3 and verse 9, one of the most hated verses in all of Scripture. Behold, I will make them of the sin of Gog, of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Wow. I bet you'll never hear this in John Hagee's church, huh? He says the they're, they're the chosen people. Do you know the chosen people are going to be worshiping before the feet of those that love Christ and who Christ loves? Boy, that's a, that's a, that'll be the day, huh? John Hagee will never tell you that. Verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. That word try, it sort of has reference to being tested. You know, we're going to be tried and tested. Verse 11, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. That's right, don't let the devils 
take your crown by falling for their traps and tricks. That's why it's important to know the scriptures. Really, it you know, you wouldn't think so, uh, listening to most church people, you know. I mean, all, all they know is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. You know, that's, that's, that's the extent of their Bible knowledge. Read Matthew chapter 7. You can read 21, 22, and 23 if you want. I'm just going to read 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So, you know, sometimes, you know, it actually sounds like some people will argue and say this sounds like works-based salvation. But the thing is, you know, somebody that's truly saved will bear fruit and find out what is the will of the Father and do it. I mean, that's just the way it works. You know? Read James chapter 2. Works follow faith. Just because somebody calls Jesus Lord doesn't mean nothing. So maybe we should read the scriptures and find out what is the Lord's will and try to do it. What do you think? All right. Verse 11, Revelation 3. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Ah, remember, this is the temple series, right? Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more, no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. I think I would rather have his new name than the name and number of the beast, but uh, hey, that's just me. Verse 13, He that hath an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write. Uh, just a little note here. All right, just a little note here on church history. I took a Bible college class in church history and uh, bought another book on church history. I like to read from a number of different sources. Uh, but back in the days, there were a lot of fake books. Uh, some called them the Gnostics. G-N-O-S-T-I-C. They were a group that believe that based some of it basically they believe that all flesh is evil and only the spirit was good and there were some gnostics that wrote some books claiming uh, authorship from the apostles like there's a thing called the gospel of thomas and uh, i think there's a gospel of judas too I'm not sure, and I'm not using that in a joking manner. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I think there is a gospel of Judas floating around back in the old days. So what the people did, the, the, the churches, the bishops of these different churches did, they got together and 
discussed what belonged in the Bible, what was scripture, and what wasn't. And what's funny is all of them acknowledged Paul as an apostle. And then here it is, you know, 1900 years later, and these Hebrew roots people are, they can't figure it out. But, but my point is, the uh, representatives from the Church of Laodicea voted not to have the book of Revelation <laughs> as canon in the scripture. And when I mean canon, uh, I'm not talking about a, a, a weapon that shoots a, a shell, you know, like a bullet. No, not that kind of a canon. Uh, canon is just basically uh, an acknowledgement of what books were scripture. The Gospel of Thomas didn't make the cut. Uh, the Book of Jubilees didn't make the cut. The Book of Enoch didn't make the cut. Uh, I mean, well, not for our scriptures. Uh, the Book of Enoch is actually in the um, Ethiopian. They consider it part of the Bible in Ethiopia, but, you know, I'm not telling you I believe it. There's some parts that just way out there, and then there's other parts that look like it could be true. I don't know. But I don't quote the Book of Enoch. Never. Absolutely never. I've had people accuse me of it for some of my doctrines, but uh, I don't do it because I get my doctrines from the Bible. But the, but the Church of Laodicea didn't like what John had written about Laodicea, and they didn't want the book of Revelation as part of <laughs> the scriptures. So let's find out why. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the um, Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, you know, I like iced coffee, and I like hot coffee. I like hot tea, and I like cold tea, iced tea. So it's depending on certain times of the year, right? That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would wert, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. In other words, he's going to chew you up and spit you out. You know, if you're going to give me coffee, iced coffee, give me iced coffee. If you're going to give me hot coffee, give me hot coffee. But don't give me lukewarm coffee. You know, if it's cold outside, I want hot coffee. If it's hot outside, give me iced coffee. Lukewarm coffee is just... No good, right? Verse 17, Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked? That's, how come when I read this, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing? That reminds me of Kenneth Copeland. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked? Spiritually, they're blind and naked. They don't have the white robe of the righteousness of Christ washed in his blood to cover their sins. Verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Don't ask me why he says to buy of gold tried in the fire. I... I don't have a good explanation for that. I tried to answer that a little while ago, and 
Uh, maybe we're supposed to purchase it with our lives. I don't know. I've never read in the Bible a good explanation of that, at least one that I can, I guess you could say, sink my teeth into. Uh, obviously, we're not buying... I mean, how do you buy gold? I mean, you know, you got to use currency to buy gold, right? And what's the currency made out of? I don't know. Verse 18. Uh, oh, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. You're going to get whipped. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Here's that uh, door thing. Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Uh, sup. That's where we get the word supper from, right? Eating. Um, eating and drinking, marriage supper of the Lamb, right? To him that overcometh, ah, there's that overcoming again. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame, Christ, did you know that Christ overcame? Even as I also overcame and sat down with my Father in his throne, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So each church has got some good points and some bad points, except for like Laodicea, which I didn't see any good points at all. They were the prosperity churches, you know. Um, Laodicea would be most comfortable with TBN, uh, the Beelzebub Network, the Total Blasphemy Network. Take your pick. All right, let's read Revelation 7. Now, this talks about the sealing of the 144,000, the 12,000 of each tribe. But we're going to skip that and go straight to verse 9. Revelation 7 and verse 9. Because I don't want to make this a two-hour study, and I could easily do it. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. You know what the TBN crowd fails to know? They fail to know that our entire purpose in this life is to recognize God's glory, His righteousness, and His holiness. That is what we were created for. I mean, it says in the Bible, He first, uh, we love Him because He first loved us. In 1 John 4.10, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. All right, propitiation, that's one of those uh, $20 words in Bible theology college. It means the act of appeasing wrath. In theology, the atonement or atoning sacrifice offered to God uh, to assuage his wrath 
So, you know, it's uh, the sacrifice. That's what it's all about. So, in 1 John 4.19, we love him because he first loved us. And here's a good one. John 15, 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. All right, back to Revelation 7, 12. Saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? He's asking him a question that he already knows. You know, the 24 elders in uh, heaven, who are they? The uh, Bible doesn't specifically say, uh, but the 12 apostles are part of the foundation of the new Jerusalem. So I would say probably the 12 apostles. And my other guess for the other 12 would be the 12 patriarchs, you know, the 12 tribes of Israel, Reuben, Gad, Naphtali, Judah, Levi, Joseph, you know, Dan, I, I, I don't know. Some people say Dan was cast off, but uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't know, but what do I know? In Genesis 49, verse 16, it says, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backward. Uh, I don't know if you know what an adder is, but it's an extremely venomous serpent. I mean, it's a... Uh, if I remember correctly, there's a puff adder, and then they, uh, I think, a, a death adder. It's uh, probably not quite as bad as a black mamba, but it's it's up there. All right, I looked it up. Death adders. Uh, they're related to uh, cobras and mambas. So yeah, uh, if you got bit by a death adder. You had a 50-50 chance of living. Paul got bitten by a, a serpent, and he shook it off into the fire, and everybody looked at him thinking he was going to fall over and drop dead, but he didn't. He didn't, because it wasn't his time. All right, let's go back to Revelation. All right, Revelation 7.13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. You know, it's like, you're asking me a question, you know the answer. Come on, dude, you know. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of of the lamb somebody tell that to the pre-tribbers verse 15 here we go this is part of the temple series remember that therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple so our duty is going to be to serve the Lord day and night in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. 
we won't have to worry about getting sunburned. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. All right, let's go to Revelation 11. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the nation, uh, unto the Gentiles, same word as nations in the Greek, for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Uh, these forty and two months is going to be basically the time of the Antichrist beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition. This is when things are really, really bad for God's people. I mean, unbelievably bad this is when this is when the church is just either going to be killed or flee to the wilderness and your pre-tribbers are going to be all all almost all of them are going to be deceived i, I honestly doubt many of them will wake up i i i just don't see it but I don't, I'm not in charge of those things. So, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. One of them is going to be Elijah. The other one, some people say Moses, some people say Enoch. I don't know. And they shall prophesy, prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's a thousand two hundred and sixty days. That is forty two months, basically. Clothed in sackcloth. So here it is. These two witnesses are going to. Uh, basically preach repentance and Christ to Jerusalem. Verse 4, These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Now, their mouth is not going to be a flamethrower, okay? But if you look in the book of Kings, when Elijah was uh, was uh, challenged by the soldiers of King Ahab, he said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume you and the 50. Fire came down from heaven, burned up 50 men. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, that's, uh, that's about a quarter of a company or two platoons. That's, you know, 50 guys. 50 guys were sent for this one prophet. Uh, is that overkill or what? Now, you think that's cruel, but you got to realize something. Ahab was one of the worst satanic kings that you could ever have. He was married to Jezebel. And her father's name was F. Bell, or Baal, F. Baal. Actually, they call her Jezebel, but it's probably Jezebel. Her name has reference to Baal, the false god 
of Satanism. And her daddy's name was Ethball. So you're talking bad news bears. And and who did they have, Mary? This witch. I mean, really. I mean, Ahab didn't have to marry her. He could have found somebody else. I'll guarantee you she was probably the most gorgeous woman in the kingdom. Or probably one of. Because she was probably of her daddy, the devil. Who was fell from heaven because of his beauty. So, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Just like the plagues of Egypt, just like uh, there was... There was... Uh, Famine in Israel for like three years because there was absolutely no rain. And everybody got mad at uh, Elijah. Oh, it's Elijah's fault. No, it's look in the mirror. It's your fault, people. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast, the beast, the beast. You know, 666, the mark of the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified so the next time you hear somebody say, oh, well, that's, you know, the great city, the whore, Babylon, mystery Babylon, that's New York City. Well, ask them, what's the name of your Lord that was crucified in New York City? Or if they say Rome, uh, what was the name of your Lord who was crucified in Rome? And of course, they'll argue and say, well, Pilate had Christ put to death, and he represented Rome. No, it didn't say by. It said where also our Lord was crucified, not by who he was crucified. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Lord Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem. He wasn't crucified in New York City or Mecca or Rome. Sorry, Charlie, only the best tuna gets to be star-kissed. Yeah, the Bible explains the Bible, if you bother to read it. And they don't. I'm not ragging on the listeners i'm ragging on the all the heretics that are everywhere boy i tell you they're they're everywhere and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies 3 days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves um you know, there was a movie, I don't even remember what decade it was in, might have been the 70s or even the 80s, there, the two witnesses were killed, it wasn't really a religious movie, I don't remember, but uh, it was like a computer took over the world and it had video cameras all over the place. And the, um, the, um, the computer, the AI, or whatever it was, they didn't call it AI back then, I don't think, said that uh, these two people were killed, they were dead, and they told them to leave them dead in the street for three days. I don't remember 
this movie was old. I don't even think it was in the 90s. I think it was like in the 80s or maybe even the 70s. I don't even remember the name of the movie. I don't even remember what the movie's about. I've never been a, really haven't never been a movie person. Um, very, very few movies that I actually liked. But I, when that came to mind, it brought to mind the, um, this, you know, this verse about the, the, the two dead bodies for three days. Verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Now what's interesting, this is a resurrection. But the thing is, the, uh, the Bible says that, uh, that at the end of the tribulation is the first resurrection, and then there's another resurrection, the second resurrection, or the last resurrection, at the end of the thousand years, the millennium as they call it. So, you know, when it says the first resurrection, I mean, there's been other resurrections, let's face it. But we're talking about after the two witnesses. But that's, that's a whole other study. I'm just pointing that out. So, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. See, there's going to be a revival right there. There's going to be, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. I think there's going to be some people getting saved. What do you think? Yeah, you watch these two dead people have been dead for three and a half days come to life and f fly up to heaven. I think I'd be afraid and give glory to the God in heaven too. Verse 14, the second woe is past, and behold, the third wo woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded the last trump, right? Not Donald. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. What did the seventh angel sound? The trump. The trumpet. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. So this first period of judgment is for the righteous. Believe it or not, that's what this is for. The, uh, the unrighteous don't get judged until the end of a thousand years and the second resurrection. Yeah. You know why we're going to be judged? 
because they're going to decide, the Lord's going to decide our place in the kingdom. Are you going to sweep the floors or empty the trash cans? Or are you going to be in charge of a city or five cities or ten cities? You know? Well, I'm kind of kidding about the uh, the floor sweeping, but the... Um, but the thing about the uh, the cities, no, that's that's a real thing. Let's take a look. Ranks, people. Now, the thing is, those of you that have been in the military, you understand ranks. When I joined the army, I was a private. That's the lowest of the low. And then you get promoted to corporal, and then you become a sergeant. Uh and then if you're an officer, you're a lieutenant. And then you can become a captain. And then a major. Uh, and then you become a colonel. And then you become a general. Well, actually, the Army cannot promote you to a general. To become a general, you have to be uh, promoted by Congress. Congress has to actually have a vote and make you a general. So, but that's how it works. And the officers are above the privates and the sergeants. Even the lowest officer is above a sergeant. Even though the sergeant's got 30 years in and the lieutenant's been in for six months. Yeah, that's how it works. Ranks. Uh, I want to make a point here. Matthew 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. And who's the man? Christ. What's the far country? Heaven. Who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. His sheep, right? And unto one he gave five talents. To another two and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. In other words, he did nothing with his talent. Absolutely nothing. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well, thou, well, well done. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Wow. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, the, uh, lo there thou hast that is mine, thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. In other words, you, you evil, wicked person. Thou knewest I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. 
Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. You ever notice that Antifa calls themselves the left? The communists always call themselves the left. What is the uh, symbol of the church of Satan? A goat's, a goat's head, right? What's Baphomet? Head of a goat. You think, you think there's uh, some symbolism there right out of the Bible? Why would they pick a goat? Why would they call themselves the left? I mean, you know, come on, people. Well, not you, but, you know. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's what I want to hear. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Oh, yeah. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye shall ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, O oh boy, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You see, hell didn't even exist until after the fall of Satan, I believe. I believe that's true. Don't, 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 get, don't count that on me 100%. I don't think hell existed from the beginning. I don't think so. I could be wrong. For I was in hunger and you gave me no meat. Boy, that sounds like uh, Joel Osteen's church, huh? For I was a hunger and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. That's right. When Joel Osteen's church had the, uh, his uh, area had that hurricane, they locked the doors to the church. Oh, yeah. I was a stranger, and you took me not in naked, and you clothed me not sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not, that ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Back to Revelation 11.
verse 18, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward, reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. You didn't know God was an environmentalist, did you? He's going to destroy them that destroy his God green earth. And the temple of God, oh, that's right, this is the temple series, right? And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I lied. I think I'm going to have to cut this Bible study short um, because I there's a couple more chapters I need to read and uh, I want to make sure that um, I do it properly. Otherwise, this is going to be a really, really long study and I'd rather break it up into two one-hour studies than to do a you know, hour and a half or two hour study. And uh, I'm only halfway through Revelation. And there is there is some, uh, well, the harvest is coming. Yeah. Right now, we're getting ready to do the harvest. The harvest of the Lord. And I tell you what, let me tell you something. Those that don't deny Christ that aren't fooled by all the pre-trib rapture garbage or whatever, uh, by the time all is said and done and the earth turns into the hell on earth and things get really, really bad, Christians are going to be begging the Lord to return. Right now, they're not doing that. Oh, yeah, they're, you know, with lip service. Oh, yeah, come... Come quickly, Lord, you know. But right now, they're they're still enjoying their bass boats. Well, I don't know if they still are, because uh, I've heard from the Department of Labor that 15% of the people have lost their jobs. Yeah. Which means it's probably more than that. I mean, I'm seeing stores closing left and right. Where I'm here in South Florida, I don't know about you, but I've, I've been seeing lots of places closed. And all these places closed, I mean, you know. And even if, uh, you know, because all this, this Corona beer thing, it's, it's not going away. This is going to be permanent. I'll guarantee you it's going to be permanent. Well, don't hold me to that. Bob's guarantees are not guaranteed like the Lord's guarantees, but uh, but you watch. There's going to be a lot of people losing their homes, losing their cars, losing their bass boats. And when when people have lost everything except for the clothes on their back, and they don't even know where their next meal comes from. And they haven't eaten in three days or a week. Well, some of us could probably go for a week's fast, you know. A little extra weight down there, you know. But, uh, you know, the kids are crying because they have no, no food. People are going to do one of two things. They're either going to deny Christ to eat or they're going to cry out to the Lord in repentance. I think the great majority is going to cry to the government, but that's just my educated guess. So, but uh, things are going to get bad. And those, and the remnant church the true Christians are going to be crying, begging for the Lord to return. You watch. You, you watch. Mark my words. Right now they're not. 
but it's going to come. And those that made no preparations at all, spiritually, physically, emotionally, that didn't bother to read their the Bible, they're going to be hit by an oncoming freight train. That light at the end of the tunnel is going to be an oncoming train. They're not going to know what hit them. We'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, what can I tell you? All right, let's uh, close this out. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.